Hello guys, BC here with another video, and today is the preseason day two, week two, day two reaction. So the three games we have today that I'm going to be talking about, I'll go in order. The Buffalo versus Carolina, the Chicago Bears against the New York Giants, the Miami Dolphins against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We'll get right into it with the Buffalo game. Buffalo won 27-14. I was a little bummed out when I saw this game. Not because any play reasons, honestly. It's just I wanted to see Cam Newton play. I wanted to see Cam Newton play. I thought, from what I've heard from Grand Warrior Football, I thought he was going to play a drive or two in this game. I was excited for that. He didn't. Um, I wouldn't play him either, though. He was hurt, and you know he's going to be a very good quarterback once he's healthy. I wouldn't play him this whole preseason, honestly, as Carolina. But... I was expecting him to play, and I kind of wanted to see him play. But it's not a smart move to watch it, to have him go out there and play a football game. But might as well talk about it. Will Greer making rookie mistakes with the pick. He didn't seem like he had an awful night, though, besides that pick. I mean, it wasn't good. 10 for 19 for 75 yards. If you throw in 19 times, you should have more than 75 yards. If you throw it 20 times, 19, 20 times, at least double that. I'd say at least 150. Like, I'm, I think I like Madden things. And Madden, if I'm throwing 20 times in Madden, I'm loaded yard. But I know it's Madden. It's not like the NFL here. So, at least double that. At least get 150. Like, just speak it like Matt Barkley went 8 for 10. Josh Allen went 9 for 11. And they threw 110 and 102 yards. That just kind of shows you where they should be. So, maybe it should be about 200. Maybe it should be about 10 yards at the row. But... That wasn't the case. Um, there's not really much I want to talk about. I like the Bills running backs. I will say that. I like the Bills running backs. I like I like TJ Yeldon. Marcus Murphy was good. You know, I will really like Devin Singletary. LaShawn McCoy got a touchdown. I mean, I like the running back situation. Plus, Josh Allen is a mobile quarterback that will really help their run game. I really do like the Bills run game and their receiver core. I don't know. I don't think it's nothing special. Really, it's, um, you know, I like Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley really showed up, like I said. But the biggest thing I really do want to point out is Josh Allen's improvement. Josh Allen went from a not a good week last week. He, put, he needed to play better this week, and he did. He went 9 for 11, 102 yards. And he led to, like, 10 points. He, I think he led to the LaShawn McCoy touchdown, and he led to a field goal. So he led to 10 points today, uh, yesterday, and he played a lot better. Panthers, not much I want to talk about, really. Maybe, ha I don't know who to have their backup be for Cam Newton. The Will Greer and Kyle Allen did not, do not have impressive stats. Like I said, I can't watch these games, so I have to base a lot of those stats. I can't, like... I see that Will Greer is 10 for 19. But how bad were the throws that were incomplete? Because incomplete passes, he could have thrown a couple dimes to receivers, and receivers just dropped them. So that's why I don't like stats. Will Greer could have had a lot better in what he's showing. 10, 19 in the interception. The interceptions is still bad. And the 75 yards isn't great. But like I said, he could, like four or five of those incompletions could have been Great throws that the receivers dropped. It could be the receiver's fault. That's why I don't like just looking at stats. That's why I like watching games instead. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And we have to look at it that way. So now we're going to go to the Giants versus the Bears. The Giants won 32-13. And I want to talk about the Giants quarterback situation. Um, if you guys don't know, Giants are my favorite team, so I've been really looking in at the Giants quarterback situation. Eli Manning showed why he is the starter. But once again, Eli Manning, you played in this Eli Manning played in this league for multiple, multiple years. And he better have lit it up against the Bears backups. Because the Bears are not starting any of their starters unless there's there's a questionable spot. Unless there's a spot up for grabs. The Bears are not starting anyone, any of their starters. 
like of course they have to start someone, but they're not starting any other starters who come week one. So if Eli Manning didn't go up in go into the Bears defense and didn't put on a good show, that would have been very concerning for Giants fans going into the season. But he did do good. He went four for four, 42 yards and a touchdown. Kyle, now I want to talk about Daniel Jones. Obviously, he's the big guy. I want we want a lot of people, even if you're not a Giants fan, just feel like football. People wanted to see if Daniel Jones would repeat his performance from last week against the Jets. They wanted to see, because last week against the Jets, he went 55 for 5, 67 yards and a touchdown. So people wouldn't want to see if he had that same. He played worse, which was expected. He played very good against the Jets. So it was expected. I expected he was going to play a little bit worse. I definitely didn't expect him to complete all his passes. But that's not even where his bad spot was. I was honestly fine with a lot of his passes. His passes were fine. He did a good job throwing the football, I thought. 11 for 14, 161 yards, and a touchdown. He did good throwing the football. His problem came with his fumbles. He he has to take... Daniel Jones has to take better care of the football. Like I said, not throwing-wise. I think he throws very good footballs, honestly. I think he might be better at Eli Manning than throw, at throwing the football. Daniel Jones is very good. Daniel Jones makes, I think, a lot of right reads, and he's He's doing a very good job at throwing the ball to where only his receiver can come down with it. It's his like he's throwing in the ball in spots where his receiver can catch it or no one's catching it. He's not he's not throwing a lot of 50-50 balls to like for the defense could come down with it or the Giants receiver can come down with it. It's either one could come down with it. No, he's throwing it where just the Giants receiver can catch the ball, and that's very good. And he's making a lot of right reads. You can tell he's making a lot of right reads with only three incompletions. Like, and I'm not even saying they were bad reads. I, I kind of forget some of the incompletions. But he's he might have made some right reads there. I can't remember the incompletions. I did watch all of Daniel Jones' throws, so it's a little aggravating. He had a he just, I know on a couple of them, he threw a bad and it bounced a yard or two short of his receiver. He threw a couple, and I think he threw one high too. So he threw a couple bad balls. I don't know if they were necessarily the bad read though on the play. Uh, and part of me thinks it probably wasn't because he doesn't he didn't throw a pick. But um, Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones is very, very good. I think at throwing the football. Like I said, he has to take care, very care of the ball. He made, he needs to make sure he fully has control of the ball before coming out at the center. That was one of the fumbles that he lost. He he released away from the center too quick, and it wasn't a nice exchange, and that fumbled the ball, and the Bears got the, um football. So, and he fumbled, he just didn't catch one of the shotgun snaps, and he just has to be able to make sure he, and I, actually, I don't even know if it was one of those, I think, I, I know he got, set, like, got hit in the backfield once and lost the ball, he needs to, he just needs to make sure he doesn't fumble the football, but like I said, throwing-wise, very good, and honestly, if you're the Giants, I'm half tempted to just keep those two on the roster, I mean, no, you, I think you keep three, I think you cut Alex Tanny, I think you keep Kyle Loetta, I think so. I think this year going into the season, you start Eli Manning, you keep Daniel you, Daniel Jones as your second, and you have Kyle Lloyd as the third. And the only reason I say keep three is because sooner or later, Daniel Jones is going to be the starter, and Daniel Jones will need to back up. Like if, if Eli Manning was going to start for many more years, I'd say caught Kyle Lloyd and Alex Sandy and just have Daniel Jones be the backup. But because he's going to be starting soon, he might even get a couple starts this season if the Giants' season doesn't go well. So you need a backup for Daniel jo- Jones, I think Kyle Lloyd play that role Alex Tanny cut two you you the Giants should not keep both going into the season they should definitely cut one I just don't know what one to cut really right now I don't like Kyle Loetta off the field Alex Tanny so far did, did not play good on the field uh, I'll talk about some other things too um Jonathan Hillman he had a couple good runs um he, he could be a good backup in our backfield um, and this is another thing I want to mention. I'm not going to talk about a lot about the, um, Chicago Bears because the thing with the Chicago Bears is nothing, no one they're really going to start come the season's playing. And I don't want to comment a lot on their backups. Like I'm really talking about things that like big rookies and the Bears don't have much of that. They didn't play much of that. Like none of these guys have really even ever seen before besides Tyler Bray, their, um, quarterback and Chase Daniels their other quarterback the only two names I've recognized going into this game and I'm looking at all the stat lines 
maybe besides their defense, and I'm really not, I don't notice seeing any of their defensive players either. So, like, they played a lot of backups and won't play, so that's why I'm not commenting on the Bears. I don't really care to talk about backups, especially if I don't think they're going to start this year. So, um, but the Giants receiver core for week one, that's is another thing, because this is actually going to be very key. Because Sterling Shepard's probably going to be out a couple weeks. Golden Tate's out for a four-week suspension. So these, so Cody Latimer and Benny Fowler are the big two that I was looking at. They need to play. They need to make sure they're playing good. And they did. They did play good. Cody Latimer had two receptions for 60 yards. Benny Fowler had two for 25 and a touchdown. And that is huge. If you're the Giants this preseason, you, you got to be liking that. You got you got to like seeing that they can produce some numbers and they can be. They can hold you off for a couple weeks. They're definitely not ideal receivers to have starting and stuff, but they can hold you off for a couple of weeks. Um, and I did like that Daniel Jones sort of Cordy Latimer for 40 yards. That was very good. He showed that he, he can throw the ball deep, and that was huge. Um, Golden Tate actually you did play in this game a little bit. He had one reception for five yards. Um, he played a little bit. I don't really care to comment on that. He's gonna he's not starting the season, and. And like I said, we, we all have to remember, they're running very vanilla stuff. Very easy to game plan against for these games. They're, they're not, no one's running anything extraordinary. It's like halfback dive. He's going to run to the six hole. It's between the guard and the tackle. Um, he's going to run between the guard and the tackle on the right side. So, like, they're running very vanilla stuff. Oh, man, uh, have you run a slant? Have you run a go? They're not doing going to do any trickery, very vanilla stuff so they don't get an eye on what their season is. So we have to remember that. So pretty much what we're seeing in the preseason is just raw talent. Who is good and who is not is basically what you see in the preseason. Not if it, that's why we, you can't tell if a team is going to be good or not is because it is so vanilla. It's so easy to game plan against. They're not bringing anything. And like I said with the Chicago Bears, they're not even starting any of their starters. They didn't even play David Montgomery this week. Mitchell Trubisky's on the bench. Tyree Coleman hasn't even touched, isn't touched the field. Their defense has not touched the field. They are keeping everyone off for injury purposes. They don't want to have anyone get injured before the season. Um, and now we'll go into the Miami Dolphins versus the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers won 16-14. to 14. I watched the highlights and I was unfolded. <laughs> the Dolphins drove all the way down the field on the final possession. Got the touchdown plus the two-point conversion to take the lead 14-13. and 13. They let the Buccaneers drive right back down and kick a field goal. That was hilarious, I thought. Man, I, I just said how you can't judge if teams going to be bad or good from preseason. But this is without preseason. The Dolphins, I think, are going to be bad. Dolphins, I don't think, are going to be good at all. I think they're going to be the worst team in the NFL this year, honestly. They have no hope for me. Their receiver core doesn't jump out to me. Their running back doesn't jump out to me. Their quarterback doesn't jump out to me. They're tight. You you get the point. There's only, their defense, they have a couple good parts, like Xavier Howard. Or is this Xavier or Xavier Howard? I think it's Xavier Howard. He is good. Minka Fitzpatrick is still developing. I mean... Christian Wilkins, I think, is going to be good. But there's no one really on their team besides a couple players on their defensive side spark any, like, thing to me that they're going to be good. Everything kind of actually tells me the opposite. Everything tells me they're going to be bad. Um, I want to talk about Josh Rosen needs to have a better performance. He went 10 for 18 for 102 yards. He You need to play better. Ryan Fitzpatrick, you need to play better. 3 for 9 for 20 yards is unacceptable. If you're completing under 50% of your passes, that's bad. Ryan Fitzpatrick completed under 50% of his passes, and he was going against like the back end of the Buccaneers defense, and I don't think the Buccaneers are going to be good either. I think the Buccaneers are also going to be one of the worst teams, and you're versing their backups, and Ryan Fitzpatrick didn't do nothing. But Ryan Fitzpatrick tends to do that. He tends to do really good against some good defenses and tends to do pretty bad against some bad defenses. He just comes up when he's needed, really. And um, so that didn't surprise me when he didn't play good. It's just the fact that you got... The Dolphins need somebody definite to play good. They need a good quarterback, and right now they don't have one. Right now, Tannehill's better in both of their options, and that's not good. It's not what you want to hear as a Dolphin fan, and that you're back, that the two star people fighting for a starting spot are both way worse options, I think, than Tannehill right now. Ryan Fitzpatrick will always be a little worse than Tannehill, and Rosen could develop. Who knows? I could be completely wrong on Rosen. Right now, I think Rosen's going to be a bust. He didn't impress me last year. 
He doesn't have any spark to that's impressing me this preseason. His raw talent does not seem that good. So, but I could be wrong. He could prove me wrong, come out here, and have a phenomenal career. So I'm not going to hold anything against them, but there was nothing crazy that stood out to me in both teams. I didn't know they started to even play O.J. Howard. I wouldn't have played O.J. Howard at all. I did see Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, I feel like he was making smart decisions from what I saw in this, like one drive or two drives. It seemed like he was making smart decisions. There was one crazy scramble play. He was looking to throw it, and that's where Jameis Winston, I think, makes a lot of mistakes is when he's under pressure and rolls out. I think he makes a lot of mistakes that way. I don't think he made a mis- like I saw him run said, uh, yesterday. And so I think Jameis Winston is trying to make better decisions because he's an athlete, and he has a lot of raw talent. It's just he makes a lot of bad decisions with his mind. He doesn't throw the ball in the right places, throws the ball when he shouldn't, runs when he shouldn't. And he has off the field problems. That's why Jameis Winston has not developed into a good quarterback. His raw talent is good, and that's why he went number one overall a couple of years ago in the NFL drafts. His raw talent's phenomenal. And I saw him making better decisions last night. So that's a good sign as the Buccaneers. Jameis Winston could still be their franchise quarterback. Right now he right now he is their franchise quarterback. If he plays bad though, he won't. He this is gonna determine if he's gonna be a backup for his career or if he's gonna be a starter on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for his career. All right, hopefully you all enjoyed. I can't believe this was 16 minutes. I really talked a lot about the Giants Pairs game. See you all next time. Peace out, y'all.